Welcome to episode 69, today we will be looking at the second crystal screen game and watch that Nintendo issued, called Climber. Dressed in a beautiful red case, this handheld was issued on my southern neighbor's celebrationary day of independence, July 4, 1986, where it is credited with an estimated worldwide sales figure of a quarter of a million units. But before we get into the excitement of today's star and focus, I'd like to answer last week's photo quiz question, we hear on our channel call, what in the world? Now, me personally, I thought this was a bit of a doozy, this mystery item shown here was definitely something that I simply adored, and I used it a bunch of times, especially when it first came to market, kinda made me feel like a pro. So, did you guess this one correctly? If not, this slow reveal will give you the answer. It's the 1987, NES Advantage Arcade Style, Pro Controller, sold by Nintendo and manufactured by the company called Asilware, this, in my opinion, has always been an underappreciated bit of hardware from the days of the Nintendo Entertainment System, and that really should get a better rep. But, heading right back over to today's star and focus, we see here, the front page of the instructions booklet, clearly showing the production code given to it of DR-802. And honestly, what a stunning cover it really is. The usual table of contents is followed up with a very brief summary of the game, where it is strongly recommended that you use a light-colored background due to the screen's transparency. In the game's description section we see that Climber is a boy who's credited with having both wisdom and courage, setting out to climb the formidable Block Mountain, where the evil Block men live, he chances upon a mystic, called Lord Meiji, who gives him both special super high jumping boots, and super strong armor, capable of breaking through the ceilings. Seeking a magical sword, Climber will have to face a dragon, with only the assistance of a mysterious bird called Hentori. A labeled schematic of the unit, naming each part is followed up with the details on battery maintenance and insertion, which is swiftly followed up by both time and alarm setting procedures for this model of game and watch. We've already mentioned three of these characters, however we see additional characters shown here, the first being Blockman's brutal pet bird, called Iron, and the final big boss of Block Mountain, called Dragolo. The use of the controls section goes on to explain how various gameplay operations are initiated by pushing and pressing certain buttons. This is followed up by the method to score points, and how misses or lost lives are accrued, together with the various bonuses and tips needed to become effective and play the game with some level of skill. The booklet then details the existence and use of a very special glittering floor, that occasionally appears, if Climber is able to jump on it, he'll automatically progress 7 levels, and when you consider the mountain is 25 levels tall, that's a big jump. Techniques, such as jumping right over block man, or avoiding iron, and how best to break though a ceiling, as well as the ways you can return back to your previous level, by dropping down to it for safety if needed, is covered, also the best method to get around the numerous thorny plants, as well as other useful hints and tips finish up the game playing aspects of the instruction booklet. This is followed by the various precautions and then the battery care and maintenance, and finally we get to see that the handheld specifications are detailed. The back page on the instruction booklet is blank, which could be used to record all your highest scores, that becomes a permanent record that does not need the internal memory that's lost when batteries are replaced. So, with a total model range of three handhelds, the Crystal Screen series is a relatively small collection. Last week we covered Super Mario Bros., that's the blue-colored game, and of course today's console is the lovely red unit, called Climber, clearly leaving only the ultra-rare green handheld, called Balloon Fight for next week's final roundup review. As you can see here, the white or light-colored background is ideal for the LCD sprites, making them easily visible. Perceived as overly fragile, with its super slim body, transparent gameplay and with a game and watch system series name of Crystal Screen, who could honestly blame me? Indeed, it was my long-held belief they were somehow ultra-delicate, turns out, that's not true, they're actually super robust, after stripping them down, the glass, or crystal parts are very well protected behind transparent plastic windows, which you can clearly see here. As with all three of the Crystal Screen series, the actual game has been reused, so today we'll only briefly look at any representative gameplay. For a more detailed look at this aspect please look at episode 50, where we've previously reviewed the identical gameplay, albeit in the new widescreen series, you'll see a link in the description section below. But I'd be remiss to avoid it completely, so here's a little taster. And just as a quick reminder, you play as a young boy called Climber, you have very special boots and super strong armor, your main foes are Blockman and his bird called Irem, your task is to scale 25 levels to reach the top of Block's mountain, where hopefully Hentori, a magic bird will wisp you away for a bonus. We join the gameplay with 2 lives lost, and 14 levels to ascend. 
Seen in the top right of the screen is the number of ceilings yet to go, it reduces as each floor is reached, some levels can be easily jumped upon, while others are much harder, and must be physically broken through. After successfully reaching the top of the mountain, known as level 1, your friendly bird, called Hentori will fly by, you must jump to catch her for an additional bonus, however, if you miss, there's no penalty other than the forfeit of the bonus. Well, we'll wrap up the brief look at gameplay right there, remember, if you want to see more gameplay, tune into episode 50. Climber received two official re-releases, or homages, the first being as an unlockable classic in the game and watch gallery 4, requiring 130 in-game stars, the second was the new widescreen version we've already mentioned from episode 50. And that brings us to this week's photo quiz question, where we see a little bit of a Nintendo item, and ask you to guess what it is, we call it, what in the world? If you think you can identify this, drop a comment below, or tune into episode 70 for the grand reveal. As we run out this episode with a montage of today's star in focus, I'd just like to reiterate that I'm doing this for the few folk out there that enjoy a little retro review without the drama and hyperbole that others bring to their channels, and I get the hate some of you feel you need to show us here, with the constant downvoting, I'd only politely ask you to unsubscribe and leave our genuine viewers in this channel in peace. As always, to those that support us, feel free to like, comment and subscribe, but most of all, I thank you for your time and company, you're great people.